Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to be talking about XDG, specifically the XDG directory specification. Um, and I'm going to talk about what that is and why you should care about it. Um, but anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so um, first off, I was I didn't even know what XDG, the, the letter stood for. So right before this, this recording, I googled what does XDG stand for? And it stands for the X Desktop Group. Um, which is a consortium of, of individuals that uh, decide how, you know, Linux desktops should work, essentially. Uh, but today we're talking about the XDG base directory specification and what that means and how you can see it in action on your Linux machine. Uh, note this is specific to Linux. Other platforms have different ideas about where, um, where files should end up. Um, <laughs> some of my tools actually adhere to XDG on non-Linux platforms, which is technically incorrect, but easier to manage. So I don't know. I, I think it's a good specification. And so I'd rather see it spread than not. Um, but anyway, let's talk about what it is today. I'll zoom in so you can see some of these texts, some of the text here. Um, but the basic idea behind XDG is it de decides some kind of high level directories that common tasks in Linux need. Uh, things like a configuration directory, or a uh, you know data directory or a cache directory, um, and the way that it defines these is it defines them in environment variables with default values. Uh, so you'll see a few of them here. There's XDG data home where user specific data files should be run. And no, this is talking about user specific stuff. So XDG uh, the XDG base specification doesn't really talk about what system utilities should do. Um, so this is specifically talking about tools that I would run as a user. Um, think like uh, you know your your Firefox profile or you know some temporary file that a user tool needs to write or you know your vimrc um, that's another idea of, of things that should go there uh, but anyway let's talk about each of the individual specified variables and some examples of stuff that would go there um, so the first is XGD data home this is where you would keep uh, non ephemeral stuff so things that you want to keep around for a while um, but they're derivative data from your application. This might be something like a, a Firefox profile. Uh, XDG config home, uh, this is where you would set configuration. Uh, also note that these all have default values. I don't know if this document, yeah, this document goes over the default values and, and what they should be. So like uh, for data home, it should be local share. For uh, config home, it should be dot config. I guess we'll just go down here because I feel like this is better than the, the part above. Um, this is where you put configuration, so things like a vimrc or you know some sort of editor configuration or uh, there's there's a lot of configuration that can go in there, and I'll show you mine in a second. Uh, XDG data dirs. This is kind of a secondary part to data home. This can allow you to have additional places where data should be stored, um, and like most Unix uh, environment variables, you can specify you can separate paths by a colon because that's not allowed in uh, Unix paths, or is it? Hmm. Uh, but yeah, XDG data dirs, similar to data home. Config dirs, this is also an extension to config home. Um, it has the same concept here. Um, where else do we have? Uh, cache home. This is the one that I use most often. This is, I think, the most important one to consider. And, you know, I guess, I guess I also use config home in other places. But cache home, I think, is probably the one where you're going to run into the most, which is where a thing should store its cached files. Uh, then there's runtime dir. This is where you can put files that uh, can be written and will go away usually when a computer restarts. Um, and yeah, so the lifetime of this directory must be bound to the user being logged in. So when they log out, those files should go away. Um, and yeah, I think that's all of the ones that are relevant. Uh, most Linux systems set XDG uh, set a, a few of them. There's also some other XDG <laughs> directories, uh, which we're not going to talk about today. Uh, but the runtime dir, which is part of the base directory specification, this is usually set to uh, var run or on modern, modern machines, it's just run. Uh, and so this is a user directory where that can happen. But anyway, I wanted to show you um, one program that uses XDG cache home and how it manages that. And that, and for that, we're going to use, we're going to clone a repository that has pre-commit uh, enabled on it. Git clone, github.com, acetilly slash, 
ASD pretty, sure. That's a, that's a thing that I've written. Um, and by default, if I do pre-commit install hooks, um, they should already be up to date because I've already pre-installed them. And the place where I've pre-installed them is in tilde cache pre-commit. Um, and this cache directory here, this is uh, this is the xdg config home default. So by default, it is .cache. And then usually your application should make a subdirectory inside of that. Um, you can also see programs in my home directory that have not um, you know, adhered properly to XDG and have written their own top level directories inside my home directory, which is, you know, not great. You don't usually, usually don't want this to clutter up your home directory. And so that's kind of one of the points of XDG in that you can, you know, put these files into, you know, dot cache or dot config or other places. Um, but it looks like some other stuff <laughs> doesn't necessarily adhere to XDG. Um, but the cool thing about, um, See, install hooks. The cool thing about XDG is you can force it to install caches in a different place. So in the in the case of pre-commit, I can set XDG cache home, and it's supposed to be an absolute path. Uh, you're supposed to ignore it if it's not an absolute path. I don't actually implement the ignoring part, but um, it is, I guess, undefined territory what, what you're supposed to do when there's a, a non-absolute path. So I'm doing pwd slash cache. Uh, so I can set xdg cache home to some value. And then when I do pre-commit install hooks, it will treat this as my cache directory instead of doing the one in your home directory. Um, and this can be useful for redirecting caches or producing Docker images or all sorts of different stuff for kind of redirecting these directories. And maybe, maybe you have your stuff on a different mount uh, or on like a network share or something like that. And you can use these xdg variables to you know, redir redirect those around and um, make make things work better. Uh, but anyway, you can see here that it's now installing stuff. And if we look inside this cache directory, you'll see that it has acted like um, like that tilde config directory. Uh, also note that pip has uh, pip supports XTG, so you can see that pip is also writing into this cache directory as kind of a side effect there. Um, so if we look at cache slash precommit. Um, yeah, it has installed all of these these cache directories here. Uh, yeah. But anyway, that's kind of a, a high level description of what XDG is and how you know a, an application should deal with it and what that can mean for users, as well as some examples of stuff that can go into those XDG directories. Um, hopefully this was useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.